I am excited to be with you this morning, to be standing in your presence because God is doing something, something great, something tangible, something awesome in our midst. And we are glad to receive it. We are glad to rejoice in it. We are glad to be part of it. We are glad to be the one that God will use in this season and this time. We are glad to be in the presence of God when God is doing this thing. We are glad. The word for us today is God's image and likeness. And we don't understand the dimensions in that. When God said, let us make man in our image, there's something about his image. But there's another dimension, which is his likeness, which Adam lost. Adam did not lose the image of God, but he lost his likeness. Being like God. And that's what Jesus came and returned back to mankind. Today, we will explore the image of God and his likeness. Hallelujah. Because we are called the image, express, the Bible says Jesus Christ is what? The express image of God. So he came with the image, not only did he come with the image, also he came with the likeness. He came with both dimensions. And he has given us all power and all things that pertain to life and what godliness. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been granted to man. So then we are going to go in that, in, 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 Inside the image of God, let's look at the book of Genesis where God gave us that word in the beginning of beginnings. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our image, that word, image, and after our likeness. So the two dimensions, God was, he was very specific in choosing his word. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Not, will they, not only will they look like us physically, but they will be like us dimensionally. And let them have dominion. So the goal was dominion. But they, to get dominion, God has to break it down. Then they have dominion over the fishes of the seas and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle of and over all the earth and over everything that creeped upon the earth. This was still the God's intention. Man has not been formed or created. God said, This is what the man will look like. This is like the blueprint of man. And God went in verse 27. And God created man and, and in his image. And in the image of God created him male and female. Created in them. Did you see that the second verse now omitted the likeness of God? So Adam came as an image of God, but Adam had to possess God likeness to begin to act like God. He was very rich and God blessed them. So everyone that was created has blessings in them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. So the Bible did not say be fruitful or multiply. It's not just a, a suggestion. You have to be fruitful and you have to multiply. And you see, when you see and, it's a continuation of what has been said. So it's not a suggestion of either or. So be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. You see, the dominion that God said, let them have dominion. Dominion is a goal. It's not what you are paid. You attain dominion through doing all these other things. When you are fruitful, you multiply, you replenish and subdue. Eventually, you dominate. Because once you are the only force that is around, you are dominating. Domination is not what you do. It is the effect of what you have done. You don't become a dominant force, but you take domination. Domination cannot be given to you. Even if somebody inherited the biggest economy, or he had the biggest business, as long as they didn't know how to build it, they can be knocked out. Domination comes from years of doing and doing. But God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That image of God is what we still have. But many of us cannot attain this likeness. We have to. Amen. We have to go back to the likeness of God. Say, I must receive the likeness of God. I must operate in his likeness today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 
What a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. The power of God always flow in the direction of his way. How do you become like God? The life best is that once you, you move in God's way, the Spirit of God flows there. There's things that God cannot deny himself. The Bible says the three realms that God operates in, in Matthew chapter 6, if you read, read from verse 9, but the verse 19 is where I'm focused on. Say, for thy is the kingdom. So God operates in his kingdom and the power and the glory. These are the realms that God operates. So when you are in the will of God, you are under his kingdom. The kingdom, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is a, 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 a geographical or spiritual location that every subject is under that king. So God is the king. The moment you begin to do the will of God, you are in his kingdom. So I tell you that the spirit of the Lord flows in the direction of the will of God. Everywhere the will of God is, the kingdom of God is there, the, the will of God is there, the power of God is there, the likeness of God is there. Everything God expresses there. You can see the expression of God in even the human beings, the animal, the things that are there. They begin to exercise dominion. Because that is where the will of God is. Second Corinthians chapter 4. The Bible said in verse 17, the now the Lord is the Spirit. I was telling us last week, I said Jesus is the Holy Ghost. He has to return first. He left as Jesus and came back as the Holy Ghost. He was God. He came as the Son. He came back as the Holy Ghost. Say the Lord, we hear the Lord is Jesus. The Lord is what? That Spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? You don't have to pray for liberty, just invite the Holy Ghost. You don't have to pray for freedom, you don't have to be blessed, pray for blessings, just attract the presence of God, attract the spirit of God. The Bible says, Where it doesn't matter, there's no limitation. Where the spirit of the Lord is, that is present, not where the spirit of God was, or not where, where the spirit of God will be. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Everything subjects to Him. Everything bows to Him. Everything remains in His control. Amen. Everything stays as He wants it. Nothing changes because His Spirit is there. I told you that God flows in the direction of His will. So, when the Spirit of God is, the will of God is there, God is always going to be there. We just have to understand that is the life of God. The image we can carry, the devil is not threatened about the image of God. But what the devil is threatened about is the likeness of God. Anything that looks like God, the devil is afraid of it. Because he carries every attribute of God, carries the ability of God, the power of God, the force of God. Can you turn this thing? Let me tilt it down. I don't know which one is giving me a just tilt it the other, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that way, no, just move it ahead. That way, it's okay. Amen. Praise God. And move down a little bit for me. So I don't get any kind of sound. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So, where? Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. So, you want to have liberty, you want to have freedom, you want to have abundance, you, to, you just have to attract enough of the Spirit of God. Just attract it. And the Bible says, you can attract God by faith. You can attract God by doing His will. You can also attract God by the word. The word of God is one of the powerful ways to bring the presence of God. Because once you are under the word, the God cannot deny His word. The Bible says, "Help my head shall pass away, but not one jot, one one inscription of my word shall be dragged to the mark." So when the word of God is in the place, it brings every part of God. The word of God is God Himself. He said, "In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God." So the same was in the beginning, and all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made, and in him was light. And the light was the light of man, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended not. So carry the word of God in you and speak the word, not in fear and trembling. The Bible said the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. 
So if you are speaking the word in fear, then the word will not act or, or carry its full potential because there is there's another entity called fear. We go into the presence of God with faith. The Bible says, by faith, by faith, people are read everything they say by faith. The elders, they, they got their report. By faith, Sarah believed God and had a child at home. By faith, Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him as righteousness by faith. Let's do some justice for this story. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to another place in Bible, Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. The Bible says here in verse 39. It says, Behold, I will not speak more. Luke 24. Are we there? Look at verse 39. Jesus. 39. The Bible said here, Behold, my hand and my feet, that it is I myself. This was when Jesus has resurrected, was showing himself to his disciples. Say, handle me and see. For a spirit does not have what? Flesh and bones. Flesh and bones. As you have seen, he was talking to a guy called Thomas that he could not believe. So when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Hallelujah. But while they still did not believe for the joy and marvel, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave them, they gave him a piece of boiled fish and some honeycombs, and he took it and ate in their presence. So Jesus was trying to prove to them it's not, not a spirit. Spirit don't have flesh. But even though he was coming with the celestial body, he doesn't have the body where I would have. He still have the the scars of the wound, but God, God was not coming out of him. So he will say, I am. This is me. Spirits don't carry. So the Spirit of God needs to operate through a body. That's why we are vessels of honor. Bible says we are called the body of Christ. Christ is the head, and we are his body. So he needs to move in labor. He has to look for somebody in labor that is willing and obedient, and he will get into that person. Bible says, if thou be willing and obedient, you shall eat what? The good of the land. So if every time God is going to move, he's looking for a willing body. Not the qualified one. Because people think that you need to be qualified to be used. No. God called the unqualified and qualified. He's just looking for a willing body. If you are ready to give him your body, give him your voice, give him your time, give him your, 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 your access to who you are, God will use you. Then you will take care of the rest. Everyone God has, have you come to the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 1, and begin to read the kind of people that were in his background, the background of his foundation, the people that came back to him, terrible people in our time. You know, none of them will qualify to do anything with God. But that's not the way God looks. God looks at man and says, man is not worthy, but I can make him to be worthy. Man was a clay before God put himself in man. He said, God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we try to be holier than God. Just present your body as a living sacrifice. Paul said in Romans 12, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. For this is your reasonable service. You have to just present yourself to me and say, God, here I am. Didn't you see what he called Isaiah? He said, who shall we send and who shall go for us? 
Isaiah said, Lord, here I am. What? Send me. I'm available. Many of us will tell God, well, you know, today is my day of, of I just want to take a rest. Please, God, come back to me. Because okay, no, I'll wait. And God will come back to me and say, ah, God, I forgot. I have to take my kids for their game today. But say, well, I'm still going. But I'm going to say, here I am. Send me. Because by this time, Isaiah was no more to even preach because he has been preaching because his brother was the king. God killed the king. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my sister. I want to show you something here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible said in the year that King Uzziah died. Uzziah was the cousin for Isaiah. Isaiah was the prophet. So his brother, his cousin was the king. So even if the king is out of order, he will not say it because he doesn't want to offend their family. He will kill the king. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. If you see where God is sitting and his robe, how big is that man? God is a very big man. I don't think anybody is as big in size. If God can sit in the third heaven and make his head, the earth his foot, where is his head? The, the heaven is just where he sits down. So his head should be from there, house, and his, his feet is in the earth. How big is that man? Some people think God is in the heaven. Heaven is his throne. That this is our office. Sometimes I'm not here. He comes to the throne if he needs to do judgment or say something. He comes to the throne and literally, the heaven is a place he created. So, if the heaven was where he lived, where was the heaven when he was existing without the heaven? The Bible says he created the heavens and the earth. So, God is everywhere. So, Isaiah said, I saw him seated high and lifted. And the train, you see what is the train? That means they, I don't know who saw that kind of cloth. They joined that cloth many, many, many times. See, the train of his robe filled the temple. Above each two seraphims, that's the angels, each, on, each one has six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. So the six wings, one is to cover their face, the other one is to cover their feet, and the other one is to fly. Verse 3, and one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord yeah. of hosts. Yeah. The whole earth is full of his glory. Yeah. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I say, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of what? Of goodness. He was lying, he was a prophet. He knew that my judgment had come. He began to cry because his king, the king was his cousin. So all the things Isaiah was doing was not right. Even though he was a prophet, God showed himself to him. He said, and I dwell in the midst of what? Unclean people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6, this one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a life coal. Do you know what is a life coal? Fire. A life one. Fire that is burning. Which he had taken with the tongue of the altar. So the altar had to have fire all the time. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sins punch. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? God already has called like, and, and Isaiah. Isaiah has already been written. He has written six books. He has written chapter 1 to 5. Chapter 6, 9 is talking about. That's the story of how he repented again. He became born again after he has gone astray. And God called him again. But God did not call him say, Isaiah. When I said, no, God said it's an open invitation. And many of us have been hearing that call today. He said, who shall we send? And who shall go for us? Who shall I say? And who shall go for us? Isaiah jumped into that opportunity. He said, Here I am. 
He did not give excuse. Say, oh, you know, I just I just got born again today. I couldn't um, go out. You know, I just got born with fire. My lips are still hurting me. Oh, there are problems in his life, but he did not bring that up. He said, here I am. Did you see it in verse 9? Here I am, send me. And he said, verse 8, and I heard a loud voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then he said, Ah, here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people. So that is the commandment. Go and preach the word. Go and tell them. Go and speak the unlimited word. Go and do right. Hallelujah. Go. Who shall I send and who shall go for? That is very, very pronounced in our time today. What God is doing? Who shall go for us? That's the word. Who is going to go? That calling is still here today. God is still calling me. Who is going to go? And some people are going to say, call the pastor. Somebody say, you know, I'm a woman, I'm a wife. You know, I'm a very young boy. God called Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 say, Jeremiah, God, I'm Jeremiah say, you know, I'm very small. I can't speak English. I don't go to school. I'm an immigrant. I don't qualify. All kinds of things. God said, do not say that you are a child. For wherever I want you to go, you will go. For wherever you go, I will be with you. God said, oh, yeah, I don't preach. The likeness of God. We're talking about his image and likeness. So many of us are so comfortable with his image, but the image does not carry out. When God molded my man was still dead until the image of God gets into man. And God breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The man that was molded in the image of God could have just been a molded um, sculpture or maybe a clay or some kind of image has nothing to do with the spirit that is in God. It was when God breathed into man, the likeness of God has to begin to power that engine. And every part of the body begins to function, the, the lungs and the, the kidneys, the heart, everything begins to run, blood begins to flow. Life is in what? The blood. That's why you have to say, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Likeness of God. I want us to see this exercise that Jesus has to do with the man called Nicodemus in the book of John chapter 3. Many of us have read it many, many, many times, but I want us to get something out of it today by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Go to John chapter 3. The story kind of gave us an insight of what God wants us to have and know, how he wants us to operate, even in the dimension of his likeness. He said, in the beginning, no, this is verse 1, John chapter 3, he said, there was a man of the Pharisees. So this man now is like, in our time, an archbishop, or maybe a bishop, but he's a very highly respected man. Look at his title, the, even the author has to give him all his accolades. So there was a man of the Pharisees. So the man was a, he was a man. Two, he was a Pharisee. His name was what? Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Just in the whole of verse one was the introduction of this man. He said, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know. We know means he was sent by other people. He didn't come by himself. Uh -huh. So he was man, one man, but he was telling Jesus, you see, okay. he, so there was other people that have, we have the meeting, and I am the only one that can come. So we, which, who are those people in the group? We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with you. So we're thinking by praising Jesus. No many people, when they come and tell you, oh, you have been doing great and that they want to lose your life. In that time, you begin to feel, you know, well appreciated, then they will strike. So this man came. Jesus did not fall for that. All this praising, and we know that you are this, you are this, and that Jesus was looking at him. What are you saying? 
get their points. As much as for it. Yes, I've heard all that. Get to the point. And the man said to him, he was praying. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I said to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The man you are telling to be born again is the ruler of the truth. These are people that read the Bible. For you to be a ruler, in fact, for you to be a, a complete man in the time of Jesus, as a Jewish person, you must read the Torah back and forth and defend it in front of the, 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 the Pharisees. They will ask you questions. Then you come out as a, a ruler, as a doctor of the, the law. You understand? That's what Jesus did at the age of 12. He went to the temple and was pastorizing them with the word of God. And the Bible said they were asking him questions, and he was asking the questions. They were wondering, this guy is not giving up the man. Because for you to be a full man, you have to read the Torah. Read it back and forth and defend it. And you come and sit down. People ask. So this man was among the judges that we judge people. But the dimension that they saw in Christ, they don't understand it. So they said, go and ask him whether we are going to add this to our curriculum or we should just see him as someone that is different. He said, we know that what you are doing is right. But this dimension, we don't understand. Jesus did not answer him. He said, except you are born again. You cannot see that dimension. Except the man be born again. He cannot see. So born again is just to have a preview. To be able to look at things. Born again will not give you access to these things. A lot of people say, oh, I am born again. That's the lowest level of Christianity. We are going to see it now. Born again gives you access into the house. Like many of us are in this house now. You can see the doors. You can see the pastor. You can see the music. You can see all that. But you don't have access. So you to use those things. For you to be able to enter the inner rooms, for you to be able to get into the restroom, get into the kitchen, to get some food, for you to be able to get better, you need to go to the next level. So he said, except the man be born again, he cannot what see. Underline the word see. So born again give you access to preview. You know how you do window shopping. You go to the mall, you're standing outside in the glasses, looking at that shoe. Sometimes we go in and take the shoe and we test it. We go and stand and pose. We didn't take pictures. But we move it, remove it back before we leave the, the shop. How many of us have done that? I've done it. If you have not done that, I've done it. I've gone to the shop, get a suit, nice suit, stand in the mirror, look at myself, say, wow, this is good. I'm putting it back. That's what body going to do. You come and you exercise the authority, the glory of God is moving. You. you are so happy. But you can't carry anything out because there is no, you don't have enough capacity to keep them. So people that go to window shopping and go to the drive car, you just jump into, um, Mercedes Benz car, you say you want to buy a car, and you tell them what you want to bring you, they take your driver's license, like you in the car. Say, so go and take a spin, you drive around and cruise, and some people will pass somewhere and take pictures in the car and go back and drop it. Say, so when I'm coming back, you're just in the shop, you didn't buy it. That's what body days do. They see things, they don't take it. Look at verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Another, I was trying to ask you that what you are doing, you can't even understand. Now you are taking this to somewhere even higher. The man was even more confused. He came to ask one question. Jesus took him to a different place. The man was there saying, What is this? What you have been saying was even hard to, to comprehend, to understand. Now you say something that nobody can even understand. Say, How can, how, how can a man, me, I'm a big man, I'm an old man. How can a man like me be born when he's old? Can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus looked at him and said, Well, you are sleeping. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of the water. He didn't answer his question, but he was keep telling you, taking him deep and wide. He said, Except a man be born of the water and of what? The spirit. He cannot. So the first one is except the man be born again, he cannot see. So now Jesus, the man was trying to say, I don't understand what he did. Jesus said, You have to be the born of the water of, of the spirit to enter. So he didn't answer what you are to what to do to be born, but you see later him bring it home. Except the man be born of the water, which was himself. He was standing as the water that washes us. The Bible says, out of our very shall flow the rivers of living water. Christ is the water. The water is the word of God. He said, except the man be born of this world that I'm speaking to you, and of the spirit, which is the power, you cannot enter. 
You cannot. That's why some people they get to God, they, they are so excited, they get something and they lose it because they don't have the capacity to sustain it. In that place of God again, they are so ex excited. Things are very easy for them to touch, to carry, and they leave. They say it's a good thing to catch them outside. They then will take it back. So you are not paying for it. And they come back and cry. I just got this job and I lost it. Why? Whatever you did to get it, you have continued to do it. To sustain it. Except the man be born of the water and of the spirit. That is the only time you enter. You enter every room, you collect everything in the house, you begin to operate in that house. You have the power. That's the next dimension. But Jesus even went deeper. I want you to say deeper. He went even further. Deep. He started from God again. He went into being born of the water and of the spirit. But look at, if you go to the next verse, have a kind of a verse 6. And Jesus said to him, that which is born of the flesh. Now you begin to answer the man's question. The man was asking the pastor, how can one be born? Can I go back in this? Jesus took him to a different dimension. Now he began to answer his question. He said, that which is born of the flesh is what? Is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel, do not be surprised that I say to you, you must be born again. So now he's beginning to explain to him that this born again is not a physical one. You don't have to get back to your mother's womb because that one is a fleshy body. You have to be born in the spiritual realm. He said, The wind now, Jesus gives us in the, the highest dimension. That's it. The wind blow it. He said, We what? Hear the sound. But we don't know where the wind is coming and where it's going to Many of us can only see the dimension of the wind and the, the direction of the wind by what is carried. Maybe the wind carrying the plastic bag and begin to take it this way. You know the wind is going this way. Sometimes when you are standing the wind, you don't know. One day, this week, I think two or three days ago, I was going somewhere, so I came down in the parking lot. The moment I came out of my car, my clothes had to go. I said, what is going on? I was trying to hit the direction of the wind. I didn't know which side. I saw people coming out of shop, covering their face. Because the wind was just going... Haphazardly. The only way I can track that wind is if there's objects that the wind carry up, then you see which side the wind is going. You know whether it's going to the west, but I just managed to hold myself until I ran into the shop. While I was in the car, I did not feel it. When I left the church, I didn't feel it. But I parked in that parking lot. It was so windy. But Jesus said the wind blew that way. You don't know where it's coming from. You can't hold the wind. You cannot trap it. You cannot cage it. So when you get to this place, Verse 8. The wind blows and we hear the sound, and we do not know where it's coming from and where it's going. Now Jesus says, So is everyone that is what? Born of the Spirit. So the first thing is to be born again and to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Then you are born of the Spirit. That's the highest dimension. When you get there, you become like the wind. You cannot be trapped. The witches and wizards, are, you, you don't see them. Because you walk, you carry, you go into that shrine, you scatter the bush shrine, you destroy everything, you go because you are a weak. You can't you can be trapped. You can't be caged. You can't be hindered. You cannot be blocked. Nothing stops you. When you begin to operate like a weak. Now, that's where Jesus wants us to be as a Christian. Amen. The wind grows. We hear the sound. And we don't know where it's going. And where it's coming from. He says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And the man will ask any other question. Because he has answered this question. So what you ask me is fresh, is physical. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But what I'm talking is about spirit. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, do not be mindful that I say you should born again. That's just a little small. You have to now go to the last. You see, for a wind blows and you hear the sound and you cannot trap that wind. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So you must be born of the Spirit. I want to say to yourself, I must be born of the Spirit. Because when you say it, you begin to accept it. Born again is good, but that's not the, the that's just the beginning. Born of the water, begin to study the word. The Bible says, study to show thyself a proof, a workman that did not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the world of truth. That's also great. 
But burning of the spirit, you only see God. You get up in the morning, Father, I thank you. I bless you for you and God. There is none like you. You are almighty. You never remember the devil. You don't remember that you are sick. You don't remember that you don't have a job because those things don't matter. What matters is God alone. After you pray like that to me, and somebody will be waiting for you to say, Oh, Lord, my rent is due. God will take care of your rent. You just keep moving in this dimension. You never, I told you that, that the, the, the Spirit of God flows in the direction. You say the power of God flows in the direction of the will of God. Everywhere you put the will of God, you put God first. God will flow into you. God will begin to walk with you. God will begin to do what you want in life. He just, you don't have to say, God, please, can you come? Just appreciate him. Say, Father, I thank you. I glorify you. I worship you. You are almighty. There is no like you. You are greater than the greatest. You are mightier than the mightiest. Omnipotent God. Omnipresent God. Ancient of days. We thank you for life. We thank you for provision. We thank you for protection. We thank you for abundance. We thank you for we have it all. Everything I need is in me. I have more than enough. I have money for my bills. I have money to take care of my family. I am blessed beyond measure. I am the head and not the day. I am above and not the letter. You are God that is not like you. In Jesus' mighty name. That's where your prayer will change. Somebody will call you and say, Ah, you hear that the witches are saying, I don't I don't see them because you can't see them. The Bible says in John chapter 31, he that cometh from above is above all. You are coming from a place that is the highest of the highest. You can't see things on the ground. When you show up, God has shown up in that place. Everything will begin to move. How would you see that when you are a man of the spirit? You say, Okay, I'm going to go to this area. Sometimes they will not let you come, they will try to stop you. Because once you came, come here, everything is a place. When Jesus wanted to go to the city of Galilee in Mark chapter 5, the devil wanted to stop him in the boat, almost killed him. It was a boisterous wind. They didn't want him to come. Because his coming will lose a man that has the key of the city. So what did they do? They brought a storm. And Jesus was sleeping. And they said, Master, we are dying. Master, care not that we perish. So you don't care if we die. People woke up and say, what is going on? So you men of little faith, he rebuked the man. And he says, peace be still. And they look at him and say, what kind of man is That even the wind will respect him. He went back to sleep. While they got to the place of Tanaray, they jumped out of the boat. The first man that came to work on him is the madman of Tanaray. The madman came and said, Jesus, the son of God. What have we to do with you? Why have you come to this land? Please do not destroy us. That was the spirit that tried to stop him. Because once he stepped in that city, that man is invaded. Many of you, if you are moving to a new neighborhood, the demons will do everything for you never to do it. But once you go there, many of them will begin to go on vacation. Some of them will begin to pack up. How have you seen that you move into a place, people will begin to sell their houses and leave? Because the force in you, you don't even know it. I went to a woman's house to pray in Lawrenceville. So she said she hated Lawrenceville all her life when the husband was about. The pastor also said, I don't know why I hated this. City. And when my husband died, uh, we lost our house and everything. So she began to walk for years. Then when she was looking for a house, every house that was shown to her was in Lawrenceville to buy. So she said, How can I live in this city that I don't like? And they did everything. And the agent told her, said, Look, this is what you can afford. Unless if you have money to go in these areas that you want to go. So said, okay, I'm going to move in there. She went and saw the house. She said, the day I came and saw the house, I was so angry in my heart. I was telling God, this is not what I want. Why am I coming to this city? But after the closing date, she went and cleaned up the house, brought pastors, they prayed. She moved into the house. Two days after, her neighbors came to bring her, bring food and give her and all that. She received it and when they left, she threw it in the trash. And she said she began to pray in the house. She went into the morning. So she did not, her neighbors would go and by their friends, this small face, and they listen to her friend. So every morning, the moment she comes out to go to work, they will come and greet her. She said, Why this morning? Are they not sleeping? I go, I go as well in the morning. Anytime I'm coming out of my house, somebody's waiting for you to greet you. So she said, She went back and said, What is this? And began to pray. I said, I hated this place. And now the neighbors I have, they are so inquisitive, they want to know everything. They will come every time to her house, talk, don't want to. 
stay with her. So she says she began to pray, began to pray, God told her that he brought her into that neighborhood to change the neighborhood. He said, Not by from the woman in front of her, so her house left, never had never left, another one left. So that was when she was afraid. So she got to somebody and they told me that I killed. She said, There's something in this neighborhood. Since I moved in here, everybody's back in me. I said, That's a good thing. He said, What is good? How ah, these people, you, I said, The people you complain, now you are missing them. Why are you missing them? He said, They used to come and greet me. All of them are just good. They didn't even tell me that they are moving. And when I begin to talk to her, I start to open her eyes. She said, I said, yes, those are witches. I said, you came in, you destructed everything they did. That's why they tried to go out to you. They tried to give you food. But thank God you were decided. They tried to cage you. But they couldn't stop you. They sold their house and left. These are all new women that it's not that they have responsibilities. That house is, is old people's own. This small small house is two bedroom, three bedroom house. You know, why are they moving? They have been there before she came. She came with the light. And the light drove them away. The Bible says the light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot. So one of them sold her house and moved into her apartment. Sold her house. You don't understand what you carry. Until you begin to represent this kingdom as it is, you have to be in the life place of God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Which means and don't be in. Comfortable being an image of God. It's not, it's not enough. The image of God is not enough. You have to have this life place. The spirit of God, the power of God has to flow in you. That somebody have your picture somewhere will not change anything until they see you. They might have your picture and even do everything in the picture. The picture cannot come in. The picture cannot bless them. But the day you enter that house, that's what many of us are doing. You think that carrying the image of God will change life? No. What kind? Of, that's why the Lord says you should not make of any inscription in heaven and anything on earth because God is not in those images. God is a spirit. Even if you know the image of God, there's no need making it or worshiping it. There is nothing in that image. What is the power? Is the spirit. Let me show you something. Because of time, we're going to just jump, jump around. Let's go to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. This is Jesus. They wanted to catch him. They said, oh, we are not being asked. Come, please. Let's go and trap him. And uh, Jesus was very smart. Because he has to use a wise saying to answer that question. Matthew 22. Look at verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 22. Are we there? Okay, the Bible says from verse 15. Then the Pharisees went to him and plotted. Look at what the word said. Plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodian, that's the money they used there, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a true. Look at how they want to that. We, they came again. We know that you are a true. And, and teach the way of God. In truth, nor do you care about anyone, for you do not regard the person of man. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Uncle Sam or not? But again, Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you tempt me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. And they gave him the money. So he brought him the diamonds. That's when. And he said to them, Whose image and description is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar, and to God the things that are God. You see, in the second part, they didn't understand. He was preaching to them. So, whose image is this one? They say yourself for some from the IRS to the other They say, give it to them, that they are giving, and give yourself to God. Render to Caesar his image and to God his image. God's image is you that is standing here asking the question. You're supposed to give yourself to God and give on Osama his money. That second part, they didn't know. They didn't understand that he was talking to them. So, whose image and inscription is this? So, you look at yourself, whose image and inscription are you? You are God's image. Then give yourself to God. 
They give to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the image of God. I have to give myself to God. This is not even something that I have to think about because I am God's image. God said, let us make man in our what? image. After our likeness. The moment you give yourself to God, that's when his likeness, because you will begin to be under his authority, under his kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The, those dimensions will manifest in you. Because you have yielded yourself to him. Let's check another place. I think Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son. I got in my message. So I'm sorry, I'm just, just coming to my mind. And I want us to see something. Luke 15. The Bible said in verse 11, say, a certain man had two sons. Jesus was preaching to the two wicked group in the time he was in. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. I call them the far to see and the sad to see. They don't see well. They are far to see, and these people are so sad that they can't see. And they thought that they know God. In America, right, they, 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 they say that we are the conservatives. I don't have anything about being conservative, but don't preach what you don't do. They came as the people that uphold the law, and they tried to. If you read from us one, Jesus, they were, were trying to entrap him with different things. Jesus escaped all of them. Then he began to talk to two of them. Because two of them think the Pharisees think we are better than the Sadducees. The Sadducees think we are better than the Sadducees. So he said, Man has two sons. These are his sons. He was talking to them as the man. And they didn't know. Look at what he said there. In the Bible, he says, A certain man has two sons. And the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fallen unto me. So he divided. To them, his livelihood. And not many days after the younger son gathered it all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. That's what it. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be what? Then he went to and joined himself to the citizens of that country, and he sent him into the field. To feed swines. And he could gladly have filled his stomach with the pot that the swine eat, and no man gave him anything. Verse 17 now. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and spare, and I perish in hunger? I will arise, verse 18, and I will go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And before you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like him, one of your higher servants. Make me. The first time he said, Give me that he was. He came to himself and said, Make me. It's not of me anymore. You can do it. Help me. See the man that came to Jesus and said, I'm going to do it. And Jesus said, Well, if you can believe. All things are possible, man chapter nine. The man said, I believe, but if I don't believe enough, help my people. This boy came back home that day, had his speech written well, prepared to read the speech. Father, you know, didn't you want to look at the father? I'm not wanting to be the father, so you don't be here, my son. So make me one of your hands of man. God is still making men today. When God said, Let us make man, if that is it's continuous. Anytime you come back, he will make you. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So the prodigal son, even though he has the image of his father, but why is it that his life and his father's life is not in the same place? It's not in that. The father was very wealthy. Well. The king has a he has servants. He is here dying in hunger. How many of us are in that way? Your father has it all, and you are in hunger. Go back to the father. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say, I'm not in the I don't want to even be a son. Just put me in the whole call as a servant. Pay me from the God of God and say, No, you're my son. You can't be my servant. Make me. That's the word. And why don't you stop me? I want us to pray. You're going to say to me, Lord, make me. Make me as one of you. Make me one of your servants.
God will not make you a servant. He will bring you back as a son. That's the goal. Jesus died that we should become sons. He said that we shall be called the sons of God. That's why he died. He came to give us the ability, the right to be called the sons of God. So can we stand on our feet this hour as we begin to pray? Say, oh Lord, my Father, make me one of your higher servants. Make me as you want me to be. When you have that dimension, you, nobody will call you to come to church. Nobody will tell you to serve God. You just do it and you are very happy. They will say, I was glad when they say, let's go into the house of God. So people going to the house of God is like, you have to kill God for them. You have to appease them like a shrine. You have to give them chicken ahead of time. Say, because you're, you're, I'm just trying to invite you. You know how you go to somebody's house? You give them a bottle of wine just to invite them for a location. So God doesn't care whether you come or not. He is God. But it is for your goodness, for your kindness. That's why you have to come. Jesus said, make me one of your head servants. And the moment the boy said, the father said, you have been dead for that in your life. So anyone that is not with the father is as good as dead, even though you carry his image. The image of God can die, but the likeness of God cannot die. I want you to say, I want to say that again. The image of God can die. Because when God wanted man, man was in his way, but man was a dead clay until the likeness of God come. He said, You were dead, but now you are alive. You were lost, and you have been found today. Many of us are coming back home from wherever we have gone far away. It doesn't matter how far you go, as long as you see God, come back. I come back to you today. The Lord will take you and receive you back. Receive it now. By the power and the authority. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my tongue is anointed. My lip is anointed. My mouth is anointed. As I begin to pray, everything I see shall come to pass. Begin to pray so that you begin to exercise your dominion. Whatever you want God to do for you, say it. Don't have it in your mind. Just say it. Whatever you want to become, say it. Because whatever you say is what God will do. He said, Karabashiko Togo, now that you have been welcomed back, now that you have taken your position, now that a new robe has been given upon you, God has put a new shoe on your head, and you have a signet ring that you are a prince, so they begin to speak. Speak as a God, speak as a son of a prince, a king, speak as a one that is the next in line for the throne by the power and the authority. He said, Rakana Mashika Kaba, you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not the The Lord shall make himself mighty in you in the name of Jesus. Everything you want God to do, say it to me. As you have spoken to my hearing, the Lord said in Numbers, that I will do for you. As you have spoken to my hearing, Numbers 14 to 8, everything you say, I will do. Begin to say something today. Begin to say something today. Begin to say something. The presence of God shall rest upon you. If you need God to heal your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot, He said, I will restore health unto you. Let the healing power of God come upon you. You need resources. Let Lord give me money. Bless the words of my head. Bless my going and coming. The Lord shall pour out blessings. Even if there are people that you need to open up for you, say, Lord, send your ministry angels. Go before me and lose the loins of kings of the land of Georgia. The kings in America lose their words uh, that they will open before me the two new gates, and the gates shall not be shut all the days of my life. So right now, by fire, by fall, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for we know that you have done it. Hade kanama shiko togo, reba baba nika taraba, zake de reba liba nama shiko togo mo, reke de reba nika nama. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Jesus, for it is done now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. It is all. It is all. So sometimes you just you get angry and get things that belong to you. There's what you call holy anger. You get angry, but you don't destroy things. You get angry. Why, why am I here? The boy said, I will arise and go back to my father. I'm going back home. What am I doing here? Feeling pigs. You know what? They put him in the lowest of the lowest. Pig is the most dirty animal. Doesn't matter. You put a list. What is it not? A villain. You are trying to say it. But you put a list on a pig. The pig is still a pig. The moment you let it out of the house, the pig is running for the dead. It's going to the, to the, to the dustbin. If you 
get dressed up a bit. I see people make things that they are yeah. the pigs sleep with them in the house, the pigs walk around and uh, the moment the pigs see clay outside and see them anywhere, it's going there. I don't care what to give a bee. It's a bee. Don't try to put this thing on the pig. The devil has a thing that you go back home where the angels of God will wash you up, cleanse you up, and put everything on you. 